Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. Welcome back to the Believe in Badges podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by betonline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by my good friend, Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? I'm rocking my Mondays. We need to get sponsored by Mondays. Dude, um, I, I can't remember Monday. any time that I went to Mondays because yeah. I... Why would you? It's because great. you can't remember what happens when you go to Mondays. Everyone who goes there drinks a bottle of uh, vodka. It's the best place in the world. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, we're in a Monday sweatshirt, not on purpose, but it just happened to be on. Uh, Monday's from Wisconsin, actually. It says, yep. please binge responsibly on the back. But that doesn't matter because this is Monday afternoon-ish because we're a little behind. But yeah, that's a little okay. behind. It's okay. You know what? It's a holiday. Know. It's a holiday. Happy Indigenous Peoples yeah, to doesn't... everyone out there, to everyone yeah. out there. Hope you are. Hope you have a day off and are celebrating responsibly. I'm in Asheville. I'm in Asheville, yeah. North Carolina on a little uh, quick family vacation getaway. Still rocking the vibes hat as always. Um, with a little bit of with a little bit of Badger gear myself, so it's Monday We're morning winners. fullback time. Uh, you know, Badgers won over Rutgers. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. Before we do, got to remind all the people at home that we are presented by BetOnline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at BetOnline with football season, season season in full swing, basketball season about to be here, hockey season about to be here. Man, there has been no better time. To be over at betonline.ag, even the MLB playoffs are going on. So, like we said, you name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. Head on over to the website, use your mobile device to sign up today, receive a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code Believe. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts. And don't forget about our other presenting sponsor, Oakbridge Wealth Management. Chris Anasetti, hit him up. He's the man. If you're a professional athlete, there is no better place to get your money right than with Chris Anasetti and the entire team over at Oak Bridge Wealth Management. All right. It's Monday morning, fullback time. You know what that means. We're going to hop in 15, 20 minutes, talk the good, the bad, and the ugly from a win over Rutgers on homecoming weekend. Uh, it was really fun last week, Burn, to talk with Mike Broadbent uh, from the night report of, you know, to preview this game. Cause you know, we don't really get a whole lot of insight on Rutgers, no matter where you are. And that was really cool to sort of preview the game. And a lot of the stuff we talked about came true. It ended up being a defensive battle. Uh, Rutgers ended up covering the spread. Uh, not really a big surprise, but there's a lot to break down from this game. So let's get into the good first. Um, Bert, I'm going to, I'm going to let you take the floor first. I've got a couple good things, but I want you to uh, lay it on me. You want me to you want me to take the floor first? Yes, sir. Well, listen, we won. We did. We won. And it was homecoming. It's a big game. We're coming off a bye. Thought that is huge for us. Um, I think our defense played much better than it's played all year. We had a pick six. You know, the a defense huge held them to six. Huge. A huge the pick defense six. held them to what? No points in two and a half quarters? Did they score at the end of the third? Uh, yeah, so Rutgers' first points uh, came when they scored. The, yeah, they scored a touchdown with just like a, a minute and a half left on, in the third quarter. So, I mean, for almost three quarters, we kept them to zero points um, and a pick six. So we we literally won the game on the defensive side. Yes. I mean, Hallman looked outstanding. That guy is still. becoming what everyone's saying is is an elite cornerback. Mm -hmm. But I think. I think the defense is coming together. Like they're figuring it out. Like you, we we talked to um to Mike and he said that their offense we had to beat their offense and we did it. Yeah, and that's exciting. Those are my goods. Yeah, I've got a couple of goods too, and especially I, I mean, want to talk uh, about Jackson Acre. I got it. 
We found the backup. Yep. I would say, listen, I said, I would say that he is a guy that's going to give his all every single, he's a fullback who plays tailback. We know some people like that. Just they're going to give it their all. They're going to do everything. They're going to break their neck for the team. Like mm-hmm. they're going to give every single ounce of energy they have to be productive. I will say this though. Ches Malusi, you can't replace. No, absolutely not. Right. But if you're going to do it, put a put a guy like Jackson Aker in who's going to literally die on the field for your team. I, mm-hmm. I'm, these aren't the right metaphors, but that's where my head's at for some odd reason. Like literally he's going to put everything on the line and he's going to succeed because he is doing it for his team. He's not a big name Braylon Allen guy, but he is. So I'm, I'm excited that we have him. I would like to see another guy like a Ches Malusi come up through the ranks it would be nice to but have that's a speed not guy. A good idea. it would be it would be nice to have a speed guy right because right now you basically you've got two and, um you, you've got two power backs right and braylon and, allen's so good yeah and you know i mean braylon's so good but you know i think so they good. do need that speed option i do want a couple uh highlight a couple things though the run defense especially was outstanding left mm-hmm. uh ruckers under three yards of carry when you know ruckers strength of their offense is is the run game and they were not, you know, they were not able to really establish any sort of run game against the Badgers uh, this weekend. And that was huge, right? Because, you know, we we made them one dimensional. Um, And uh, secondly, you know, you mentioned Rico Hallman's, uh, you know, huge pick six. I mean, that, that was as big a momentum turner as there is to really, you know, uh, end the second quarter, go into halftime up 17, nothing, and then be able to, you know, I mean, if you think about it, like where they were on the field, like Rutgers was in prime position to score a touchdown. That's a 14 point swing. I mean, that, that that's a game swing right there that, you know, if you switch that up the other way, Rutgers wins 20 to 17. And so, uh, I, you know, I enough cannot be said about um, uh, about Ricardo Hallman. And also I thought Will Pauling probably played his most complete game of the year. I think Will Pauling out of all the receivers was uh, was the definite bright spot here for me uh on uh on the offensive side of the ball um but you know and, and one other bright thing uh way cutting down on penalties only two penalties in the game that was huge because we'd seen a lot of issues especially on the offensive line with penalties over the last couple of games uh cleaning that up i think made a really really big difference for the badgers so um let's move though uh to the bad because i still think there 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 was a fair bit left to be desired uh in this game. So what have you got there, Bern? You know, my, my thing is we're in the big 10 now, and this is not, you know, you, you can't, I'm trying to think of like, you, you just got, you got to start fast and you got to finish fast, mm-hmm. right? Three points in the first quarter is not con. No. Um, we got Iowa coming up. You have the gauntlet coming up. What is it? Iowa, Illinois, Ohio state, somebody else. And then Nebraska, right? Like you, you literally can't flinch and you can't have, I will, you know, you can't be at home and homecoming and come out and have three three points in the first quarter, mm-hmm. ten points total on offense in the first half, right? That's that's not you. You can't you can't win like that. Like no. I've been on teams where we've done that, and it's a fist fight. But you have opportunities. You got to put your opponent. Oh, you got to put them in the ground and then shut the door, nail it down, and then bury them. Yeah. And people hate to hear that, but this is college football. This is a business now, and this is score forty points and put a team. Out, you know, get them out, get them on the bus quick. And the Badgers just haven't done it. Now, I will be, I am excited that they fight the whole game, right? Maybe that's a good, but like they're fighting the whole entire game mostly because they have to, mm-hmm. but there needs to be set. Like we did it against, um, who did we do it against two weeks ago now that I'm playing? Purdue. Purdue, you score points in the first quarter and you keep scoring and you win. And it's, it's hard. Purdue has to fight and they have to do things that they don't want to do that's out of their game plan to try to come back. Mm-hmm. And that's when you put teams in bad positions. Rutgers is not the best team we're going to face, but it's getting a lot more difficult. And Iowa coming in is no joke. And if you're going to let them hang around, I've been on every team I played on. We let Iowa hang around. Yep. Every team I played on, they beat us. Yeah. I, I mean, I was, saying, off, I was 
Iowa's offense it may not be great. They are not great. May, may not be great. They're not great. They didn't complete a single pass to a wide receiver last this this past weekend again. But I mean, it doesn't matter. They they're still winning. They still have an outstanding defense. They still have an elite cornerback in Cooper DeGene. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's going to be interesting seeing a uh, former Badger Deacon Hill uh, is the starting quarterback over there. So it, it's going to be a, a really interesting game against Iowa. We will be talking about that later. This is the this opportunity. Week. Yes. Yes. This is the opportunity to literally have Iowa come in thinking that they have nothing to lose and you just shut them down. Mm -hmm. And that is the game. Like that's the game. And if you can do that and you can play, listen, I'll, I'll always take three to nothing in the first quarter. Let's, let's not go there. I'll take 10, nothing in the second quarter. But if you want to put a team away, we all know this score touchdowns. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Wisconsin, if Wisconsin gets out fast against Iowa, it's over because Iowa has no passing game whatsoever. And so they're going to need to, they're going to need to do that. But there there are a couple of things though, that did concern me in this game. First of all, again, lost the turnover margin, two lost fumbles, one, one pick, one huge pick, obviously, but two lost fumbles uh, is concerning one by acre, one by Braylon Allen, especially the Braylon Allen went down in the red zone. Uh, That's just a huge, huge, I mean, you put that in the end zone, and then you're looking at going into halftime 24 nothing, and that it's a completely different game, right? It's a completely different game. Then it's, you know, really, really off to the races. On top of that, you know, even when, you know, Rutgers was in half the pass situations, Wisconsin's still not generating a pass rush. One sack on the game um, in I don't know how many dropbacks. It was a fair few dropbacks for – uh, for the Scarlet Knights, yeah, I mean they they pass they drop back to pass thirty nine times. We got one sack, and so I, I think that that needs to be that needs to be improved. Like it's just not that's not going to be good enough, especially when you get to the better teams, to the Ohio States on the schedule. It, it's just simply not going to be good enough. You're going to have to pressure these guys a little bit more. Also, just you know some of these really like three and out, four and out drives get really frustrating. They get really, really frustrating. And it is, you know, and, and the defense is going to get gassed if you keep doing that, especially if, you know, it's a, you know, incomplete pass, run for two yards, incomplete pass. I mean, you know, the defense is off for like 30 seconds and, you know, they're back on the field. And so, again, with but some. Nothing, it, 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 but it, yeah, it was, I totally agree with you. You, if you, the clock stop, I mean, it's quick plays if, you, mm-hmm. if you're having completes. Let's not get away from like the old school offense of, you know, two yards in a cloud of dust, four yards in a cloud of dust, go for it on third and six or third and four, not get it. It's still the same thing. So we've, it's not like we've not been here. It's just that we're going quicker because we take up literally Mm -hmm. a minute of clock, if that. Unlike when you're running the ball three times and it takes up like two and a half minutes, it's a different, I completely agree with you. It's a different ball game than. I think there has to be a happy medium, right? Like we ran the ball, what, more than half the, the, the touches? Uh, Yeah, 46 runs to 31 passes. So way more. So I think we're going to have to find a way to, to balance that. And I do think the offense is still finding itself. And you, you got Ches down, but you have – we've watched um, – Tanner Mordecai run the ball. He looks, I think he looks awesome. Brown had a nice block on one of his, on one of his runs. It was very pretty. Mm-hmm. It was a nice, I'm not going to make excuses, but like, I'd rather have them drop the ball or front of the ball against Rutgers when True. You know, Rutgers compared to any other team. And you go into the, listen, I fumbled the ball. It is hell on earth to go into the meeting room because you know what you know. And it doesn't stop there, right? Like I fumbled on a special teams, play. But then it comes, you know, an individual you're getting called out. Hey, Bird, you had a fumble. Then you go into whatever you go into. And then, like, defensive coaches are yelling at you. All these other people that like, you have no idea. Dude, you're on the line to get uh, to get food at the end. And the people serving you food are like, dude, you remember when you fumbled on Saturday? <laughs> like, it's it's a never-ending. So, so you know Braylon and Jackson are not walking around proud of that moment. And they will, in my mind, do as much as possible to not allow that to happen again. And I was coming up. This is like a pucker up and let's get physical. And let's like, man, I'm just pumped. One, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. It's going to be a big old game. It's going to be a big old game. Big old game. It's going to be, there's so much excitement. That, I mean, it's, it, it's, exci- it's always exciting to play Iowa, dude. It's always exciting to play Iowa. It's always exciting when they come to Madison. I mean, you know, Do even, you know, even, Wait, what's your- dude, even the, um, uh, like the managers and stuff, they've got what is it, the toolbox game or whatever? The toolbox game. Yeah. I'm going to get into that game. Yeah. 
we've talked about that here. We've talked about that here before with with, with a couple of the managers, and that's that's always a fun one. Attention athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes. Led by wealth manager, Chris Anasetti, our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Boulier, Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says... I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacete. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. Um, but we do got to co- we got to move quickly though to the ugly from this game. I've got a couple. Uh, first Go one drops. We had like this could have been a much bigger game if on Pro Football Focus they only said through there were three drops. I think two by Hayden Rucci. Hayden Rucci had a tough go of it he had Mm -hmm. he had the two drops and a fumble and it it was definitely not a um it it was not a great performance out of him tough weekend for for Hayden and I mean those drops are those drops are killers especially when you're passing as much as they are now and you know just to keep drives going like we've talked about like I was that was that was really rough to see some of those drops and you know some of them like Chimery had one that would have been a little bit of a tough catch. I think it was on like their second, first or second drive that would have gotten them down like the first and goal within the five. And, you know, it just, you know, it was a little bit above them, but it hit them in the hands. I think one that wasn't counted as a drop, at least on PFF, was a Bryson Green 50-50 ball. I think Skylar Bell had a, had a 50-50 ball that hit him in the hands he should have caught. And I just, th- those drops aren't, you know, in the bigger games, they're really going to come back to haunt you. They're really going to come back to haunt you. And the other thing is these lollipop snaps that uh, in the shotgun that are going, you know, even on the 18 yard uh, touchdown run for, um, for Braylon, you know, I mean, freaking Tanner Mordecai is, you know, doing a, has a 48 inch vertical to jump up and grab and like manages to hand it off to Braylon, like while he's still mid air, like twisting and stuff like that, which great for him, but like that's throwing off the timing. And I don't know. I would like to see, I still want to see, when when they're going to run the ball downhill a little bit more, man, I want to see them set up in the pistol. I want to see them set up in the pistol, and I want Braylon to be able to get even that one or two steps more of being able to head downhill when he gets the ball instead of basically receiving the ball in the handoff while he's still standing still. I mean, Burn, you're you're the running back here. Like, how much of a difference does it make when you've got even those one or two steps of acceleration when you when the ball is you know hits you in the stomach instead of just being handed the ball when you're standing still? See, there are two different complete schemes, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like the pistol is a is almost like a power eye type of running. It's the same running steps ish. It's not yeah. so much of a zone scheme. It is, but it is a little different. I'm not gonna lie. I like both because we used to do both. And you ask if you look at AD, man, he could run power. He can run inside zones with with the best of them counters. Those plays I like because they hand us because they tell you where to go mm-hmm. now. When he was in the shotgun and he got the ball, AD was a perfectionist of getting up on these dudes' heels. And you get – it's hard to picture, but you get D linemen running. You get linebackers flowing too hard. They all wash around, and AD always had 
the vision to cut back or find something. Really also, but but here's the thing about that, right? Is that like AD, it was five nine on a tall day in a in a buck ninety and had acceleration out the wazoo. It takes Braylon a little bit longer to get going. Like their top speed might actually be really similar if once you think about the long strides that Braylon has. But to get up to that speed, it AD can accelerate on a diamond and three steps be up, be, you know, be up to the speed that he needs to be at. Whereas Braylon, like he, he to get just that mass going downhill, it takes a little bit more. And especially now, you know, you know, Chez was much more AD ish, right? Chez could do that. Yeah. He could has that. He has that short space acceleration, that ten yard acceleration. That's really, really important. Something like that, where you know, and so that that's where I want to be able to see Braylon have those couple of steps coming downhill to be able to maximize the power and speed combination that he has because he ain't slow. I mean, he probably runs a four six. I mean, it's not, he's not a burner, but he's still probably running a four six. Whereas, you know, so that is. Dude, I ran a four seven five and I scored a touchdown on a zone play out of the shotgun, not a pistol. All I'm saying is, it's possible. I, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's, no, I'm, not I'm saying just it's saying impossible. that, like, I think that I there think are advantages to doing that. Yes, I do think there's some advantages, and I think it would be helpful. It's a vision thing too. You, you know, like you're not turning your shoulders. Mm-hmm. To get the ball, you're running, you're taking a step forward or, uh, you know, step angled. So you're not, so it's a vision thing. You're getting the ball right away, you know, like you're getting the ball behind a little bit, which as I'm sure Braylon might have liked when you're in the eye, you get the ball further from the line, you know, or not further from the line, but things are happening. You can see it more. Um, but, but I, yes, I think he can do both. I ha- we have, we've seen the pistol a little bit. We haven't seen that much, but I would say my ugly is exactly what you're saying. And I think we need to score more touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, we we just haven't been doing that, and I think that is that is how you win football. I mean, they, they scored two offensive touchdowns in this game. No, I, that's my ugly, right? Yeah. Like we won, and I'm happy, and I don't care. Like that's all that really matters. But if you're telling talking to me, like, what do we need to do to be a better team? Pass catching passes, no turnovers. All these things are the the norms that you have to do, right? In our offense, you have to catch the ball. We have we need more completions. 50 50 balls have to be ours. Mm-hmm. Like, that's kind of like what that's the, the NFL, right? Like, mm-hmm. the 50 50 ball is usually a wide receiver supposed to make that play. Yeah. So, we need to make a few more of those, but all those will make us continue drives to score touchdowns. If we don't score touchdowns, it's hard to win a game, right? We against um, Georgia Southern, we had what, nine points, and they, had, they didn't do the move the ball. It was it Georgia Southern? And then they scored a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Nine to seven is a tight game already. Yes. Right? Like, we scored every time we had the ball, but it doesn't matter because we didn't score touchdowns. Exactly. So that's my ugly. We need to get in the end zone, and we need to make it a habit of getting in the end zone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, well, man, the defense scored a touchdown. Like, I'm just so happy because the defense is looking so much better, and that's, I thought, a, pl- a place where we really needed to kind of step the game up. But, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to get better, man. I, I have, a, I have like, a, once they start, you know, just kind of, Fixing a f- couple things, you're going to watch a way better defense out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's exciting, baby. It's very exciting. I'm also excited about our guest, one of our guests this week. Yes. Yes. Another it, it's, a, it's, and, uh... it's another fullback pod. Get ready yeah. for another fullback pod. Uh, we've got Chris Presley, the man who doesn't even know that he's the reason I got cut from the track team. Um, Not so yet. We're, we're going to. He, he broke this. We need to go knock if you buck. Oh, we yeah. put that music on. Uh, we will. I want to rip his shirt off and squat 600. 20 pounds like 15 times <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even add the weight up he still probably could definitely that definitely. dude is like naturally just hercules he is he is i'm excited i mean his biceps are so big he couldn't hold the ball dude he got he, he, he couldn't be a halfback because his chest and his bodies were too big he fumbled every time he touched it maybe these things aren't true but in my mind the lore is true I mean, you know, what, 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 what's the line? Like when the, when, when the story's better than reality, tell the story or whatever it is. Like, yeah. you know, I, I think that's kind of like what we got to do. Like what we got to do. Yeah. So. I, I can't wait to have him, man. He's one of my favorite people. And he was a monster for. And he's another East coast career. guy. He's a Jersey boy. A Jersey dude. Yep. He's no joke, man. All, all the, all, all the Jersey dudes we got. We, oh, it's exciting. It's Iowa week it's is always, expe- is always exciting. Like, I don't know. I get, I get really, I know like Minnesota, like the big rival. Like, you always get excited for the ax, but like I get so geeked up for the Iowa game. Part of it is because, you know, my best friend is from Iowa city 
and he's a, and you know and, and he's a Hawkeyes fan even though he went to UW. Like he he went to UW and and is a and is an Iowa fan still because he grew up in Iowa City. So I love to give him shit, especially when um, I have to mark that. But especially when <laughs> uh, it, especially when Iowa's bad, it, it just it, it makes me you know it makes me giggle. So I'm 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 excited. I'm the Hebrew so hammer's coming to town, baby. Yeah, the hammer's coming to town. It's gonna leave the smack. Put all, put all the cores lights you have in ice right now, please, everyone in Madison. And then some. Okay. Then go buy some more and put those on ice as well. Just in case. Just in case. In case. <laughs> it's not in case. It's when, not if. It's cases is what you mean. Just in cases. cases. There we go. And that is how we are gonna end it here on a Monday morning fullback. Uh Bernie. Great to see you as Can't always. Wait. I'll see you in a couple of days. Can't wait. It's going to be dope. And um, yeah, and all of you out there in Badger Nation, thank you for tuning in to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network presented by betonline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. So hope you guys are great. And until next time, on Wisconsin. <laughs>